Let me drop this one and pick this one. Today is a show. My, uh, I have a guest. Is um, Kufe Ekanem. She was uh, my classmate in in, uh, you know, in business school. But before that, you know, I've known her husband who has been a mentor for years. And then today, you know, from, from mentor for a decade or so. And I called them in the week of New Year's. I was checking in on my dearest people. And I just, I just spoke to them in a year. And I called her and said, is it me? And, and called, texted your husband. And he says, today, hmm, I have a testimony. Talk to your sister. You know, and I called her, is it me on the phone? I said, Uncle Kofi said, I should call you. And she said, today, this is a long story. Call me back. I want you to come and share it with my audience. So today, is it me, Kufre Ekanem? is here to testify. You know, I want to start by, you know, when, when you were passing, I was saying to you, you look lovely. And then you said, <laughs> thank God you don't look like what we've been through. Yeah. 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 I think that's something that, that's something that, I think of often. Maybe if I'm going through, I've not gone through anything close to the things that we've sh we've talked about with the past one year. But so I'm going through something and I'm standing and I'm walking and I'm like, hmm, it is supposed to see what I'm actually going through inside my mind. Mm -hmm. I think they will be holding me on the road and be like, Do you understand? Does that kind of thought occur to you? Sometimes? Oh, in fact, um, I almost put out something on my um, Facebook status only yesterday. Okay, and it was. I am a strong woman, however, sometimes I need a hug. Can someone just please give me a hug? Yes. So yes, I understand what you're talking about. Yes, it's, yes. It's, um, it's incredible. Well, well, you, you are living an ongoing testimony, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and, mm -hmm. and that's part of why I, went, I was so happy when you agreed to come on. Because I, one of the most powerful things about the show is when the person is on the path. Mm -hmm. You know, so people who are watching connect with that. Okay. Because when they've heard, when it is, completed, perfected. They're like, how do we know that it's not a film? You know, and, but when they see you, so, you know, share with me what happened. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, where do I start from? And so, um, like you know, my husband does a program called Hymnodia. Yes. So it's perhaps the biggest hymn gospel concert in the, the, first. In the region. The first. The first. Yes, the yes. one, the only. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, he started, Hymnodia kicked off as usual, and then we were doing Hymnodia and everything. And so we just onboarded the 15 people. Contestants. Yes. yes. We call them Hymtestants in, in our case. case. Yes. So we just onboarded them yeah. when all the noise and news about coronavirus came on. Yeah. And so like a responsible organization, we're asking ourselves, so what do we do? Mm. We have people's children, people's husbands, people's brothers and sisters in here. Mm. What do we do and everything? And then... <laughs> The first thing that hit us was the voice of him, Nadia, had a heart attack. And so he was rushed into the hospital. And then, so we're now saying, now that the voice has had a heart attack, maybe we should shut down because mm. he needs time to recover mm. and all of that. While we're still thinking about that one, the next thing that happened was um, the federal government announced a possibility of a shutdown. So there was no, we had shut to shut down. Water. So that day was 30th of March, I'll never forget. We went and then we shut down the operations. We asked everybody to go home and all of that. And then when the last person, we said, we said to them that we will wait for them to confirm that they've all gotten home. Mm -hmm. So when we got the last phone call, we shut down the Institute and then we started going home ourselves. Mm -hmm. At about 3, 3.30 a.m., I felt um, someone sitting down on the bed, you know, Someone had gone out and now sat down, you know, that weight of sitting down. So I opened my eyes and turned and I said, ah, babe, you're awake? He said, yes. And I said, okay, great. Morning. Now that you're awake, let us plan what we're going to do with this two weeks lockdown. Ah, we need to utilize these two weeks very well. He says, okay, my wife, let me ease myself and come back. Today, my life changed in that split second. I waited to hear the noise of wee wee, I didn't hear. I waited to hear the toilet flushing, I didn't hear. So I screamed, K, nothing. Then I said, Kufre, nothing. And I jumped up 
and raced into the bathroom. And there was my husband on the floor. Eyes coiled, bulging, panting. And I'm like, is this a joke? I just spoke to you now? Let me ease myself and this. I now dragged him from his leg and dragged him. You know how they build the houses and so between when you want to go into a room or something, they, they, there's a little kind of step up. Yes. So when his head got there, he couldn't move. So I had to run again and then lift the head over and then dragged him into the room, then grabbed the pillow and put under his head and then remember that I had a phone and so I got my phone. Ambulance, ambulance, I need an ambulance. Hey, hey, please. So I started calling, jeez. <laughs> uh, I started calling the wife of the voice of Imnodia because I remember that an ambulance was involved in taking him to the, to hospital. the hospital. So I started calling her, Miss and Miss and I need an ambulance. Kufra is dying. Kufra is dying. Then I said, what did you just say? No, no, no. He's not dying. He's, he's ill. He's ill. You know, and I was now praying in tongues. I was praying. Now I understand what the Bible means by praying all manner of prayers. I was just praying, Jesus, no, you cannot. God, you must. You know, in fact, I was issuing commands Command like a too. commander. No, God, you cannot. God, you must not. God, you have to help me. God, you have to do this. You know, I just kept and I kept calling people. And, you know, it's such a, I don't even get it. At that point, everybody's name number blanked out. We're there to cut the long drama. Sure, to we're there from that time he fell till about 15 minutes past seven. That's, wow. That's when the paramedics got to my house. That's four hours after. I said, um, what hospital? I said, I don't care. Go to anyone. God's so kind. It was lockdown, first day of lockdown. So mm. there was no traffic yes. on Lagos yes. Road. Yes. So we ran like that and they went to Lassut. And so we got to Lassut. And they started all those long story. Did he travel? Was he in a crowd? Mm. Da, 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 da. I said he didn't travel. He was not in any crowd. Yes. There's nothing wrong with him. Mm. He just fell in the bathroom. Mm. And the doctor looked at me like, you're funny. He just fell in the bathroom. I'm telling you the gospel truth. This is what I can say. At this point, my husband was paralyzed. He was paralyzed in his right hand. He was paralyzed in his left right leg. I had no clue. I didn't have an idea that he was. Right. It was when the doctors came and they were now telling him, trying to know mm. whether he could move. Uh -huh, move your left hand. He did move your right hand. And then and the next thing I saw was my husband doing like this. He was using this one to drag this one. And it struck both of us at the same time that, huh, guy, something has happened. So he used his eyes and turned his eyes to seek me out. And so I just ran into his front and I said, okay, you're fine. Nothing mm. is wrong with you. You're fine. I'm here. Don't worry. And then he said, mm -hmm. I said, oh my God, we can't talk as well. And then I said, okay, all right. You'll just be fine. Don't worry. And then so he now turned to look at the doctor. The doctor was now saying to him, eh, don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry. We're coming back. Then the doctor now comes to me and says, CT scan, Madam CT scan. So... I moved him to CT scan again because there was lockdown, no it was, patients, yes. it was free. Yes. So we did the CT scan and everything. And that was when they discovered that he had a blood clot on his brain. And they said he had had a stroke, an ischemic stroke. And um, they started the treatment. And um, the, the medicine they were using to thin the blood in his brain now flooded his lungs with water and he went into heart failure. I was just sitting outside in the car and I was saying, God, why is it pouring? Yeah. Why is it pouring? I was just sitting down there. I think I had one person with me and we're singing. Mm. We're singing in the car. Mm. Um, funny enough, we're singing an Igbo song. Come and see the goodness of God. So we're just singing it in that car. And then mm. a youngish little man approaches the car and says, who is the wife of Kufre Kanem? And I said, me. And then he says, um, Madam, good afternoon. 
Madame, we're between the rock and a hard place. And I turned and looked at him. And I said, Doctor. He said, yes. I said, I beg in God's name, don't let my husband die. Whatever it is you know how to do, go and do. And then he looked at me. And he said, Madam, get a grip of yourself. I'm not God. I only care. And I said, okay, sir. Go and care. So yeah. we're there, close to an hour. The doctor now came out again. I was just going. So I was just looking at him. I was looking at him with my eyes. He just, he passed us. He passed the car he was going. Then after he went like three other cars after us, he now stopped, made a U-turn, and came straight to me. Okay. I said, Madam, you're my problem now. You are the one that is my problem. My patient is fine. Mm. And I'm like, doctor, please stop messing up with my brain now. You just came now and told me one thing, and then now you're saying another thing. Mm. You said, go and see your husband. Today, I got down from the car with shaky legs. I went into the ward. Before this time, my husband was breathing. That's how he was breathing. When I was getting closer, I didn't hear that breathing again. Mm. From where I was in the car, we could hear it. I didn't hear it. So I said, ha, ah, go and see your husband. Go and see your husband. So I now went there. I opened the door. My husband was sitting up in bed sitting up, he had drained buckets of water buckets. from him. So while we were in the hospital, mm -hmm. still trying to recover, they now came one day and said everybody was discharged. Someone had COVID, someone had caught COVID in the hospital the environment, hospital. so we had to be evacuated. So without being properly healed, mm -hmm. we were discharged. Yes, I remember you saying that. So we went home. And I set up my home to become a hospital. Right. I became a quack doctor and quack nurse. <laughs> so we, I mean, it was, so when I started doing telemedicine, ah. so if he, if he did, mm, right, you call. dog, mm, nurse, you know, the nights were the worst because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. So you find me most nice saying, Doctor, he's restless, he can't sleep, what do I do? He's breathing up, he's breathing down, he's going sideways, he's doing... It was, it was madness. Hmm. So, yeah, COVID had his own challenges and... Yeah. and uh, mm. We were doing well. We had to go into rehabilitation, doing all the uh, speech therapy, doing yes. all the physio yeah. and everything. Um, so April came and went, we now did all the six weeks review and everything and the doctors were like, you're very lucky, you got out, you got off with very minimal, very minimal, um, yes, you know, so we're just very happy um, and just like we we're, were told this on like May 20th, the last of the doctors gave us this verdict on May 20th, right. May 22nd, 6.15pm, the second stroke happened. Second stroke happened. So he had the first one on March 31st, and then he had the second one on May 22nd. Yes, the second one was now more serious and more extensive than the first one. The second one was a hemorrhagic stroke. He was bleeding in his brain, and yes. it was also a bulbar stroke. He shot out his tongue. His tongue, the full length of his tongue came just out. came out. And so for the next six weeks, my husband has his tongue, had his tongue out, for Could, six weeks? Yes, couldn't eat. We're not feeding him through a tube through his nose, so he couldn't talk as well. So it was just the same roundabout thing again, running from hospital to hospital to hospital to hospital. You know, so um, luckily for us, the MRI showed us this one because we, when we did the CT scan, we didn't see anything this time around and we couldn't understand why he had a second stroke. Yes, I know Because we were following our therapy, yes. we were doing everything we were supposed to do, we had changed diets and everything, and he had almost regained the use of his right hand and right leg at yeah. this time. You know, so we were generally very grateful for where we were at and at we could time. see full recovery in and view. The and then the second one just. Wow. 
whacked us. At this time, I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell anybody anything. Uh, I couldn't because I was now like, yeah, what are you going to say see. now? And also, I had testified. I had, I had taken my time to write a testimony. I had thanked God for healing my husband and everything. Mm -hmm. And so I, I said, you know, if I go back to telling people, oh, this is what happened or that what happened, I'm actually now going against my testimony. So I said to God, I'm standing on my testimony. You've healed my husband. Mm -hmm. You have healed him. Mm -hmm. So I, I told myself that, you know, when you kill a chicken, mm -hmm. you kill it, you know you've killed it. The blood has spilled, but the chicken was doing chicka chicka chicka. So I said, okay, this is the devil doing chicka chicka chicka. So I refuse not to see Jesus. this one. Yes. I'm standing on my testimony. My husband is healed. And we started the second journey. We started the second journey. Wow. How, how today is going is wow. <laughs> <laughs> Because I remember the second, I remember when, I remember you told, when you were, when you were telling me the story, and then the second stroke, I'm like, what? Yeah. Because it's the kind of thing that you just like, okay, is this, so I feel like at that point, I wonder, is this going to keep happening? What more is going to happen? Do you understand? What more am I going to deal with? Uh, this second one, I had a lot of emotions. Yeah. I was angry. Yeah. I was angry. I'm like, why? Yeah. Who? Yes. Where? When? You know, this one, I saw it as an affront. I saw it like, how dare you? Yes. I've done everything I'm supposed to, to do. do. So why? You know? So I was like, if you're a, if you're a human being, then I wait for you. Mm. If you're spirit, then I, do you understand? Mm. I was like, okay, so this is war. Oh yeah, bring it on. Let's fight it. Mm. You know, that I can understand. What's all this you're stealing from here and there and coming and throwing things up at me? Mm. One. Two, I was angry at the medical um, system. Yeah. Why wouldn't they give me? Because, you know, when we went back, they said, oh, but he is expected, but he came too soon. And I'm like, hello. That the second stroke was expected. Exactly. But well, so, nobody had told you that. Thank you very much. So they, they kept saying, oh, normally when someone has a stroke, then they will, they it's possible they can have another stroke. And I'm like, why didn't someone just tell me this? on when you were handing over to me part to recovery that this is likely to happen again. Um, I come to the hospital very early in the morning one day and I want to enter the ward and they said no. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. They said no, no, nothing. So I sit in the car. Mm -hmm. And then um, my friend's phone rings because I, I came with my friend. Mm -hmm. His phone rings and they ask him to come in. Okay. And so I started laughing. I'm like, <laughs> me, wife, don't come, come in. in friend, friend, come in. Yes, I said, okay, all right, go in now. So he went in. So when he went in, I now called the, uh, the warder. I said, come, she came. I said, is my husband alive? He said, yes. Mm -hmm. Then she said, but there's a little problem. I said, but he's alive. He said, mm. yes. I said, okay. Just go. Hmm. So I sat in the car. And then my friend came out and his face was like this. And I'm looking at him. And then instead of him to go and sit in the driver's seat, because he drove us that morning, mm -hmm. he didn't. He came to yes. the window of where I was. So I put down my glass and I said, what's up? He didn't talk. Pally, what's up? He didn't talk. Oh boy, talk now. He just did. <laughs> then I said, is my husband dead? Mm. Then he said, no. So I said, what is it now? Mm. He said, they said he has COVID. And I said, hmm. I went inside. Um, I was now waiting. We waited up until about 11.45. Mm. Before five doctors and two nurses came. And so when they came, <laughs> an interesting thing happened. The doctor said, so what's your name? I said, Ezinne. He said, yes, that's his wife. And I turned and looked at him, so how do you know? He said, oh, your husband wrote on the book for us. You remember, he doesn't talk, his tongue was hanging out. So your husband wrote on the book for us. My wife is Ezinne. She is 
outside. She must be worried now. Make a video and show her that I'm okay. <laughs> so, so I started laughing. That lightened my, yeah. my, my load. Yeah. And I said, okay, if he wrote all this for yes, you, then yes. he's he okay. I left that night and I came every day thereafter yeah. against their advice. I will share come. I'll park my car in front of that landmark center. Yeah. I will stay there and be kabashing you know, yes. until it's 6 p.m. And then mm. I'll carry myself and go to my house. And I'll return the next morning and the next morning and the next morning until I got the call, come and take your husband. And Christmas, I wanted to travel with my husband. I was like, okay, let's do a change of scene kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, let me go for checkups again before we go so that I don't say I want, you know? When we got there for the checkup, the man finished checking my husband's heart, finished mm -hmm. checking his heart. He called another person to come in. They checked and checked. In fact, by the time he was inviting the second person, I had become apprehensive. Why are you calling another doctor? You know, by the time they went and went and went and everything, and he just turned and said, Ma, I cannot see any traces of heart failure. I sat up. I said, eh, what do you mean? He said, this heart I'm looking at doesn't look like it had heart failure. And I said, sir, what are you talking, talking about? You are the same one now. You've seen this heart three times, four times. You are the one who has been giving me, ah, 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 what? The man said, Ma, I'm telling you that God has answered your prayers. I ran mad. I started jumping up. I was screaming down the hall. It took me a while to realize, you're in a hospital. Come on, woman, other people are ill. I just, I just, I was just. Then he now said, no, it's okay. You're having your, your dancing moment. Eh? Put on, you're putting on your dancing shoes. Dance. Give thanks, Give thanks to who is due. Yeah. You know, I, I just kept shouting. I was just screaming. I was like, you say, hmm. and I ran out of the hospital because I couldn't contain my joy. Yeah. I ran out of the hospital to continue the screaming and everything. After I now came back inside and I said, doctor, thank you. Thank you so much. He said, no, 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 no. That I should not make the mistake of thank thanking you. him. That we should thank God. Because this same treatment that he has given to my husband, he's given to other people, but he doesn't have this kind of result. He said, what has happened to your husband is a miracle. Do not place it anywhere else. It is a miracle. Yeah. And I said, and I said, and that's a medical doctor. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, you know, my husband, my husband is, uh, is the more practical of two of us. Yes. So he just gets up, wears his dress, and then turns to the doctor and says, so just how good is my heart? <laughs> I love it. I'm telling you. I love it. And then the guy told him, oh, you're doing between the 55 and 60% range now. Wow. My husband said, put it down, please. Yes. The doctor wrote it. He took the paper as if it's a certificate. Yes. And then now came out and then, wow. wow. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So today we ask God for a new heart. Yes. And yes. he delivered a new heart. Yes. 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 Today, how? Yes. How do you watch a man? who was paralyzed, he comes back full fit. Yes. He can outrun all of you here. Yes. <laughs> he, told me that I'm using that he can outrun all of you here. The yeah. guy does 60 minutes on treadmill. Yes. Cham. Listen, in that place where my husband was, mm -hmm. in fact, it is on record that my husband is the first survivor from the ICU of Landmark. Mm -hmm. People were dying, mm -hmm. left, right, and center. So much. I should be thanking you today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. All the crew, everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Dali we ha machi neke na mere mo is it Jesus? Oh mama diri gi. Dali we ha machi neke na mere mo is it Jesus? You know, when um, Izini was talking, I mean, I'm a Christian, but I always tell people sometimes I might as well be a pantheist um, because of my belief that God is available and accessible to everyone, regardless of their faith. But the language of my interaction with divinity is Christianity. 
And there's something that we Christians, when I was coming up in teenage church, used to say, so this Jehovah El Shaddai, Jehovah this, and we coined one called Jehovah El Ephizi, the God of all effects. Give thanks to who is due, yeah. you know? I, I just kept shouting. I was just screaming. Yeah. I was like, you say, you know, and when I was hearing this in this story, that's all I could think about. Whether you believe in a God or not, a personal God or not, there are some times when you know that there are forces beyond you that are holding you, that are carrying you, that are keeping you. There is a sense of wonder and awe and transcendence when we know that there is something, maybe someone, maybe not someone the way we know it, that has, that holds, that does things that we can't do by ourselves. And once in a while, we hear a story that's bigger than ourselves, and we remember that truth. I heard today a story bigger than myself, bigger than all of us, bigger than anything we could have created with our hands. He said, what has happened to your husband is a miracle. Do not place it anywhere else. It is a miracle. And it's just a reminder that there is something that is bigger than us. And every once in a while, we can encounter it. We can encounter this force, this God. And the force can show up for us. The force can show up.